Hi everyone, welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is my channel, Secret Life of a Seamstress, where I love to talk all about making clothes normally. Today I'm going to be talking about a few other things as well. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you're all doing really well. So today's video is going to be a lovely, relaxed, chatty catch up. I'm going to be talking about some new makes, some new fabrics, some plans that I have, and also some knitting and crochet and reading as well. So quite a varied video today and I will put timestamps in the description just in case you're not interested in certain parts of the video so you can just skip past and watch the bits that you are interested in. If you're new to my channel and you love sewing and knitting and crafting as well I'd love you to consider subscribing. I post sewing and crafting videos every Sunday at 8am and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So without further ado and chit chat I do have quite a lot to cover today so let's get straight into the video. So first of all, I'll talk to you about a few new things that I've made. I've enjoyed some lovely sewing time recently and it's been so nice. It seems strange to say because obviously I do sew a lot, but recently, actually since Christmas, I've found it quite difficult to get into sewing. I felt as though I wasn't quite sure what to make. I didn't want to make things for the sake of it and I really wanted to make things intentionally. And I've spoken to you a little bit about that already. This week I've spent some time focusing on some of my capsule wardrobe style items. So in this video here I spoke about building a little collection of neutral t-shirts and I spoke about a couple of patterns I wanted to try. So I've been searching for the perfect t-shirt sewing pattern for some time now. I wanted something a little bit more boxy, a little bit more relaxed. So this week I spent some time trying out the Jessie t-shirt by True Bias. It was one of the patterns on my list that I wanted to try this year. So the Jessie t-shirt is a lovely sort of oversized boxy style t-shirt. I really really liked the look of it from the pattern images. I thought it looked really lovely on the model. You can make this as like a full length t-shirt or you can also make it cropped as well. So I thought this would be a really handy pattern to have if it worked and if it fit me really nicely. I went for a size zero in my size based on the finished garment measurements. I always tend to go on the finished garment measurements rather than just my body measurements just to see what the amount of ease is like in the finished garment and I have to say I'm super pleased with this t-shirt I really really like it I really am fussy about how necklines feel this one feels lovely it's just the right amount of like roundness <laughs> it feels quite wide I can't feel it on basically which is what I like so I've actually made a black and a white version of the Jessie t-shirt now so the fabrics that I used for these two t-shirts, um, I actually picked up from our local John Lewis and sometimes it's really nice to actually go and feel the fabric, isn't it? So I brought this jersey that I'm wearing, the black version of this t-shirt. This is actually an organic cotton jersey and it feels really lovely. So again, I know I'm quite fussy, but I don't always like cotton jerseys. They can feel sometimes like they've got quite a lot of elastine in and they can be quite stretchy and quite structured. And I don't always like that. This one is actually quite drapey and it doesn't have an awful lot of stretch in it. And I've had a few sort of ready to wear t-shirts made from similar fabric and I know that I really like them. And then I also picked up some viscose jersey and that's what this white version is made from. So you can probably see just by me hanging it here like this. This one is far more drapey than the black one that I'm wearing. And it's such a lovely quality. It's really drapey, really soft. It was lovely to work with. I'm really pleased to have found a t-shirt pattern that I really liked. I think what I want to do is actually go back to John Lewis and buy some more of this t-shirt fabric and actually make a black cropped version of the t-shirt because I think that will look really nice in the summertime with high-waisted things like sapphire trousers and skirts and things like that. So pleased to have two new makes for my capsule wardrobe. Next in finished sewing makes I just thought I'd briefly share this dress which you may have already seen. I do have a whole other video of me making this dress so I won't go into too much detail about this one but just in case you haven't seen it um, this was a hacked Lyra dress by Tilling the Buttons. Um, I made this for a couple of parties that we've had to go to recently and I made it um, inspired by a lovely dress that I'd seen in Cezanne. So with the Lyra dress it's not normally fully buttoned down so I've just hacked it to make it fully um, open so it opens all the way down and buttons up like a normal shirt dress. <laughs> 
Um, and I've also added a couple of pockets here. And yeah, I'm pleased to report that I wore this dress to both of the parties that we had to go to and it felt so nice to wear. So I thought I would just mention that one and just do a little plug for my video if you haven't watched it already and you would like to pop over and see the full making process. And in that video, I also explain how to do the button down hack as well. So if you're interested in that, then uh, do pop over and watch that video. Another make that I finished recently and I'm so pleased with, I've used this so much, is this quilted laptop case. So I actually made this as a tutorial for Sew It Yourself blog and I'll link them down below if you haven't um, heard of them. And this was something that I made and wrote up for them. But I thought I would share it just because I absolutely love it and I really have used this load. So what I'm trying to do this year is to get out of the house a little bit more and when I have writing or editing and things like that to do, to go and do that work in like a coffee shop or something else or somewhere else and say that I get out of the house a little bit more. And this laptop case has come in super handy. So I'll just open it up and show you. So the lining is contrast inside um, and it has this little front pocket here. This is all quilted um, the front pocket is separate and then it's finished with bias binding all around the edge. I thought I would mention this because if you are a newbie to quilting, this is a great sort of first quilting project. The quilting on it is super easy, it's just straight lines. I break down the whole process in the tutorial, how to measure for your own laptop case and also how to do all the quilting and everything as well. So I think I would definitely be making a few more of these. I think they'll be great for gifts as well and you could easily adapt this pattern to make it for like an iPad or a phone or a Kindle or something like that as well. So yeah, thought I would just mention that one too. So let's move on then to some new fabrics that I've been picking up recently. So I have been thinking a lot recently about spring and summer makes and getting really excited about all the things that I want to sew. And I gave myself permission to buy a few new fabrics because I really had whittled my stash down to pretty much nothing, which is always a good place to be and you feel a little bit more justified in buying new things then, don't you? There are a couple of things that I really want to make that I think will fit in really well to my current wardrobe. So first of all, I picked up this really lovely lovely mustard stripe French terry fabric. This is from Fabric Godmother. I've barely even opened this yet because it was folded up so nicely that I just didn't want to disturb it. <laughs> Do you ever feel like that? It's silly, isn't it? But here we go, I've opened it up now. This is a lovely quality French terry with a mustard stripe. It's not too yellow, this mustard stripe. I think I need to be careful with mustard colors because sometimes they can really drain my skin tone. This one is a sort of brownie, almost rust actually, mustard. Um, and on the back, it's just that sort of loop back French terry. So it's not super warm, but it's warmer than like a cotton jersey or something like that. So again, in my capsule wardrobe video recently, I talked about Breton tops and how useful they are to have in your wardrobe. And all I'm gonna make with this is a simple cocoa top by Tilly and the Buttons because I love that top for that pattern so much. And I think it will go really nicely with some other things in my wardrobe, like my wide leg jeans that I have, the jeans that I'm planning to sew, which needs to be next on my scary sew makes list. I've got the dawn jean pattern by Megan Nilsson and I really need to get on with those and if they work out as I'm planning them to <laughs> they will go really nicely with this cocoa top when it's done. So yeah I thought the mustard was a little bit different I tend to go for navy normally or black when I go for a stripe but the mustard um, was a little bit different and I thought it would be really nice for spring as well so this wasn't cheap this one it was 10 pounds per half meter quite expensive but as I've mentioned in the past I do tend to try and invest in good quality jerseys where I can because I just feel like I'm much more likely to wear the clothes that I make if I invest in lovely quality fabrics that feel nice when you wear them. The next, this one is so pretty. I love this so much. And again, I've barely sort of undone this one because I didn't want to touch it too much. I hope you can see this on the camera. This is a cotton gauze fabric and it has some lovely embroidered flowers all over it. If I put it up to the camera, hopefully you can see. This is a really lovely soft cotton gauze and I think it will be really nice to wear in spring and summertime. It's got that sort of feel where, it, you know it's gonna be cool because it's a gauze, but it's also quite soft and I think it will actually feel warm as well, if that makes sense. And with this, I'm gonna make a Norma blouse by Fiber Mood. 
So I've had the normal pattern for quite some time and I've never actually made it up as it is. I've used the sleeves on it, but I've never actually made the normal as it is. And again, I feel as though that will just go really nicely with other things in my wardrobe. So again, it will go really nice with wide leg jeans and shorts and probably even like Sapphire trousers and skirts and things like that. I'm hoping it's going to be a really good wardrobe staple. Next, I have a couple of um, very practical white fabrics to share with you. So in my John Lewis trip the other day, I picked up this crepe fabric so this was actually in the sale and it was only three pounds a meter and i got a meter of this it is a bit polyestery um i'm hoping it's not going to be static i don't think it will be and what i want to make with this is another ogden cami um, but I want to experiment with putting some lace around the v-neck and just see how that works. I thought picking up this super cheap crepe would be a really good test of how that will work and Ogden camis are just like a staple, you can never have too many of them. I wear them all the time underneath things in the spring and summer like cardigans and shirts and things. So that was always going to be super useful. And then another white fabric. <laughs> Um, I have picked up some more of this Minerva exclusive viscose fabric. So this one is the same fabric that I made my Marnie blouse from back last year. And what I'm going to make with this one is actually exactly the same. I'm going to make another Marnie blouse in white. I've wanted to do that for a little while. I always knew I wanted to make another Marnie because I just love my first one so much. And I think white, again, it's just going to go with everything. That's something that I also need to get on with soon. So I'm looking forward to having another go at those pin tucks. So moving on to knitting then, I have a finished knitting object to share with you and that is my jumper that I was knitting for my daughter. So this is the pattern that I've been knitting for her. It's actually one of those patterns that comes in child's and adult sizes and there are two different variations that you can make. You can make this sort of hooded um, sweatshirt style knitted jumper with like a kangaroo pocket or you can make this plain crew necked cropped sweater and she really liked this one she loves a cropped sweater at the moment so this is all finished and done now I had a little bit of a sizing dilemma for her because she's almost 12 now and getting quite tall so she was actually a little bit big for the child's size so I ended up making the smallest adult size but actually just cropping the length slightly so it's a little bit shorter than it's supposed to be and I'm pleased to say that it actually fits her really nicely nicely. So this is the yarn that um, the jumper is knit from. It's a King Cole camouflage yarn. I think it only comes in the pink and blue and it's that sort of colour fade. Is that what you call it? Like a stripey, like a self-striping yarn. That's what I want to say. Just a plain double knit. Um, it was really nice to knit with. It's quite cheap. I think this was about £3 a ball. The only thing I would say is that I had one of these balls that was just absolutely full of knots and it was so annoying. Every time I was I'd knit a certain amount of rows or whatever and then I'd come across another knot and then either had to cut it out or like knit it into the jumper somehow. And I was thinking, oh, this the whole lot is probably going to be like this. So I didn't bother to sort of change balls or anything. But the second ball I used didn't have any knots in. So I just wondered if I had like a dodgy ball of wool there. So this is knit flat and then you sew it up. And what I would say now is that since I've been knitting things in the round or top down, I absolutely hate even more than I used to sewing things up because I just feel as though you can never get them quite as neat as when you knit top down or knit all in one go. And what I did with this one, rather than actually soak block it, I steamed it with the iron. I don't know if this is a good thing to do or not, but I used my pressing cloth and just hovered the iron over the jumper and um, that really set the stitches really nicely and it's given it quite a lot of drape. This was quite stiff when it first came off the needles, but just steaming it like that worked really nicely. Um, and it does say that you can wash this at 30 degrees as well, so it should be quite easy one to care for. So that's that one. So of course, immediately when I'd finished that jumper, I needed to have another project lined up. So I started this cardigan, which is from this book, Mode at Rowan. I've had this for ages. I got this from John Lewis as well. I think it was in the sale for only a couple of pounds. So what I'm knitting now is this cardigan. It's just a really lovely, simple stocking stitch style cardigan, quite oversized, really chunky, a lovely big sort of button band all the way around. And I thought this would be really useful for just throwing over things in the spring and summer or like transitional months when you're cold outside and things like that. I thought it would be something that should knit up pretty quickly and also be nice and easy. There's me just saying about knitting top down or knitting in the round. This one is actually 
actually knit flat and sewn up as well, like lots of the row and patterns actually are. So I haven't got too far with this one yet. This is what it's looking like so far. It's all sort of curling up at the bottom. There's no ribbing at the bottom. It's just the style of it is that it just curls up like that. So this is um, the yarn. It's Rowan Brushed Fleece. I actually bought this from Amazon because it was slightly cheaper to buy it from there than anywhere else that I'd seen. And I brought seven balls. And I'm actually hoping that I'm going to have enough wool for this whole cardigan because I've already used one ball just for this and I've got to do a super long back and fronts and sleeves. That is a really nice easy project that I can just work on in the evenings watching telly and things like that. But another plan that I have for knitting because that Rowan cardigan is one that's just a bit mindless and you can just sit and do. I really fancied doing something as well at the same time that I could get my teeth into a little bit more. And I've had this yarn, Serdar Cashmere Merino Silk. I picked this up from the Knitting and Stitching show in like a big pack of it. It's just a double knitting yarn. What I want to do is actually start the Whitmore sweater by Taylor S Studios. So I've knit two versions of the Whitmore cardigan and as you know I really really love that pattern. So I thought I would give the sweater a go as well and I thought it would be really nice for like spring and summertime. Not that I'm probably going to get it done that quickly. <laughs> Maybe next spring and summertime. So I would like to try some lace in the round. I've never done that. And because I'm familiar with the lace pattern of the Whitmore cardigan, I thought it might be an easy route to go down. I'm not normally a two projects at a time kind of person. I normally just focus on one thing at a time, but I'm feeling at the moment like I just want to be able to switch between two things. Another little knitting project I have on the go at the moment that I thought I'd just mention just in case um, it might be interesting, especially as we're coming up to Easter. I'm knitting another one of these little bunnies. So we picked up this pattern from John Lewis. It's just a King Cole pattern. You can make either a large, really fluffy bunny or the little, um, little bunnies. <laughs> and around this time last year, I was knitting loads of these for gifts and things for Easter. They come together really quickly. So it was a really nice little sort of gift project that I could give to people. So my daughter asked if I would make her one of these for her friend's birthday that's coming up soon. So here's where I am with it at the moment. It looks so funny. So I've done the body and the head, I just need to do the ears and the arms and legs. But this, yeah, as I say, it's just a really fun little quick and easy project that comes together so quickly. Um, I've made the arms and legs actually, I just need to stuff them and sew them together. But I thought I'd mention that one just in case you're looking for a little gift for Easter. In crochet, I'm still working away on this Highland cow pattern. Do you remember at Christmas I mentioned this and I really wanted to get this done for my daughter for Christmas? Well, that never happened, um, but I am planning to get this done for her birthday, which is in April. So I have a little while to get on with it. I just need to get a move on basically. So she absolutely loves Highland cows and I found this pattern on Love Crafts. It is a paid for pattern. I'll just show you the picture, but it's just so cute. <laughs> I think it's really a baby toy, but I'm sure she'll still love it anyway. So I've pretty much done the head now. I just need to move on to all the other little bits and pieces and hopefully I'll get that done in time for her birthday. And it was funny because when I picked up that crochet project again, I used this bag to sort of keep crochet projects and things in. When I went into this bag, I found this head <laughs> that I'd started to make ages ago. So this is the head of a bunny. This is a free pattern that I found on Love Crafts. So I just picked it up really because I wanted something to crochet. I find this kind of arigami, is that how you say it? Making these little toys is so satisfying. I really enjoy it. And I wish I'd known how to crochet like this when my children were babies because I couldn't crochet at all then. I just couldn't get the hang of it. And then all of a sudden, um, a year or so ago, something just clicked. And then I just realized I could do it after all. There are so many lovely children's and babies toy patterns out there. So that head actually belongs to this cute little pattern. This is a free pattern, I think, on Love Crafts, and I'll try and link it below. Um, but yeah, it's just a really cute little bunny pattern with a little stripy sweatshirt. So I need to pick that one up again at some point. But I just thought I'd share the pattern because it's really cute, isn't it? So if you have any babies or children, or again, maybe for Easter, it might be just something that you might like to try. So just to finish, I'll do a little bit of reading chat. So, so I'll just let you know what I've been reading recently. The first library book that I read was this one, The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. So this has been a popular one, hasn't it? And I think 
it's been one of those sort of well talked about books recently. So I really wanted to read it and see what all the fuss was about. And I have to say, this one has had mixed reviews on Goodreads and Amazon and things like that. Some people love it, some people hate it. I actually really enjoyed it. I read this super quickly. I got really involved with the story and the characters. It does deal with some quite sensitive issues. And one of the things that sort of came up when I was reading reviews about this book was how it could be quite triggering, but on the whole, I actually really enjoyed this story. It's a bit of a love story and one of those where it goes back into the past and you read about someone's life and how it's brought them to a certain point and the decisions that they have to make moving forward. So yeah, I would highly recommend that one, but I would say just maybe read into what the story is a little bit more before you start it, just in case there is anything in there that might be difficult for you to read. Then I also read this one, The Bird Cage by Eve Chase. So this one was the one that I wasn't sure whether or not I'd already read. <laughs> So I've read a couple of Eve Chase's books. I've read um, The Glass House and also Black Rabbit Hall, I think it's called. And I loved both of those books. This one, I have to say, I wasn't really into at all. I read it and got on with it okay, if you know what I mean, but I wasn't particularly invested in it. I didn't really sort of feel connected to any of the characters in it. And the story was a little bit bland and it took a while to get going. And I wasn't really even particularly interested in like the outcome of the story either. I was just reading it to get to the end, which was a real shame because as I say, I've loved both of her other books, but this one I just found like a bit blah, really, a bit blur, blah, you know, a bit boring and um, yeah, not really as good as any of her other books. So if you have read this one, let me know what you thought because I wonder if it's just me. I thought I would show you this book that I picked up when we were on holiday recently in the Lake District. This is called The Dress Diary of Mrs. Anne Sykes, and it's by Kate Strasden. So this book is all about a lady in 1838 called Anne Sykes who was given a diary on her wedding day, and she uses it to collect snippets of fabric um, that she records, like all the dresses that she's worn and where she's worn them and things like that. And the diary sort of comes into the hands of a fashion historian who kind of unravels the secrets of her past and um, like the fashions and fabrics and things like that that came from those times and it's got some pictures in as well of the diary and the fabrics and things like that. So I'm really really looking forward to reading this. This is next on my list. I'm not sure if it's actually like a storybook or more of a factual account but I think it will be interesting nonetheless especially for someone who loves fabric and loves sewing obviously as much as I do. So yeah, I thought I would share that one with you because I'm sure lots of you will be interested in that book too. Oh, that feels like a very long and waffly video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know, again, as these kind of videos always are, it's a bit of a mishmash of everything, but I do quite like filming these videos and it's really nice to bring you up to date with some new makes and new fabrics and plans and things like that. As always, let me know in the comments what you've been working on. Have you started your summer sewing yet? Um, what's on your sewing table? Do let me know. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like as well. Take care everyone. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye.